Guys, Brooke Whipple here. Look what I got. <laughs> I got my new pack in the mail. I should say it's an old backpack. My favorite kind. I love Trapper Nelson backpacks. They're old style. I like old stuff. And I found a new one. This one is bigger than my other one. I'm going to unbox it today and I'm going to talk about all my other favorite packs. All the favorite packs in my life. All my backpack loves. Stay tuned. Hey, wow, check it out. These tiny little leaves. These right here. These are trout lily leaves. These taste really good. If you've never tried those, trout lily, delicious. Anyways, <laughs> I got distracted. Man, cats all over the place. Hey, buddy. All right, I'm gonna unbox this thing. This is gonna be epic. Here we go. I think th these things are very common, so I was pretty excited to find this one. Oh, did I tell you it was red? <laughs> That's so cool. She's like, what are you unboxing, Mom? I want to see. Oh. Look at that! Oh man, look at that, that is cool! So it's missing the D-rings on the bottom. Oh no, they're attached. Right here they are, so I just need to fix it. Isn't she gorgeous? I love these packs. They're actually quite comfortable, I think. Pretty sweet, huh guys? Yeah! I love it. I would eventually like to make one of these myself. So look at this. It's got a snap pouch inside. Nice, just nice big compartment. I really like that. It flaps over, very simple design. I love the simplicity of this design. And then the the D's, the D-rings, right here. They snap in, they need to be put, put back together. Oh, that's pretty sweet, isn't it? I'm totally digging it. I love the color, I love the color. I thought this was gonna be a bit bigger than my other one, but I don't think it is. Pretty sweet. What do you guys think? Is this cool stuff? I think we should have a, like a Trapper Nelson club or something. Go hiking and with all this epic classic camping gear because <laughs> I just love it. All right guys, so this is backpack show and tell. Hey, and check it out. Got the first flower of spring right there. All right, so this is, uh, I've got a collection of like four or five backpacks here. I'm not sure how many. Let me get started. Some of you might recognize this, I'm sure you will. The old Boy Scout backpack. I picked this up. Oh man, I had this out camping recently. It smells great, it smells like wood smoke. I picked this up at a flea market. I think I paid $2 for this. Now, uh, I gotta tell you, a lot of my stories about some of my favorite stuff, a lot of it is attached to a very low dollar amount because I get a real thrill out of finding really cool stuff for cheap, good old quality. A lot of times American made leather, canvas, wood. Those are the things I really look for. It's a cool little Boy Scout backpack. Um, I added the leather on the sides. It was missing. Uh, it must have been some kind of some kind of webbing, maybe, or string, or maybe they just leave it empty for you to put stuff in. I don't know. So I, I added, and this leather string. This is for boot laces and stuff. It came from the Fairbanks dump, so it was free. Uh, so it's kind of rough. This isn't in the best shape. I put another piece of boot leather through the, the top here and it flips over. It's got the cool, cool Boy Scout stamp. The leather is old. I'll probably have to replace that here pretty soon. I mean, that's pretty beat up right there. But um, what a neat old piece of history, huh? I just, huh. Property of R.W. Pratt. 
at some point in his life he had this pack. So yeah, I use this one as just like a little grab and go pack when I'm just maybe doing a little little cooking. Um, just a quick little pack. It's comfortable. It's got the canvas straps that I like. I like these a lot. Got the, the hooky doos down here. So yeah, I like this old Boy Scout pack that I paid two dollars for. On to the next one. Here's another pack I find myself using quite a bit. And it's backcountry Buena Park, California. I don't remember where I found this pack. I'm sure it was just five dollars or less. This is what drew me in. It's got leather, leather straps with a piece of wool. This reminds me of like the backing on carpets or something. Oh, I know what this reminds me of. It reminds me of the old boot liners when I was a kid. Just pure wool felt liners. So it helps give you a little cushion here. So I like the design. It's just really pretty. I'm always looking for leather. I like old packs. It's just like a basic, almost, almost like a school pack. But I just love, I love the detail here with the leather. And yeah, I just, I use this as a grab and go pack quite a bit too. Um, water bottles and your knives and whatnot in the side pockets. So yeah, another cool old pack, one of my favorites. Now this one is more recent. I picked this up last year in Fairbanks for $2. I added a little bit to the design here, so let me show you that first. I love patches, and when I find them, I'll pick them up. So I sewed on a couple patches on here. Got a Ontario moose patch. And I got this old cool patch from a, a yard sale for, I think I paid a quarter. American Red Cross Military Welfare Service. And then I added a moose tooth that I found on the Yukon River. I used it as a pull pull tag for this pouch right here. But I like this old pack. I've never been able to find a maker's mark on it. Uh, yeah, it was pretty gross when I got it. I washed and cleaned it all up. What I like about this one, of course, more, more leather detail, but this one actually has a hip belt, which is nice to get some of that weight off your shoulders. So, Oh, there it is, right there, Camp Trails. This is a Camp Trails pack? Oh, I'm really surprised of that. Isn't Camp Trails like this cheap kind of, like, Walmart store kind of brand? Oh, I'm thinking of Coglins, I think. Anyway, Camp Trails. Well, I had never seen that before, and there it was right on the buckle. The thing about your gear, maybe it's not so much the gear, but it's the places you've been with the gear. And I took this one on a really great trip last year. And it was really, now when I see this pack, I'll always think of that trip. So, always really cool to associate your gear with great memories. So, this is definitely one um, that has a great memory attached. Which leads me to my favorite pack, last but not least. Of course, you guys have seen this in my videos. This is my Trapper Nelson pack, the original. And you've seen me climb mountains with this go on little adventures and it is definitely my favorite pack and I'll tell you why because someone very special gave this to me this is from my friend Neil Eklund and let me tell you about Neil Neil's one of those um, amazing sourdough types in Alaska who has done the things you only read about in books in fact he has a book and I'll put the link below if you want to read his book <laughs> full of adventure I met Neil in 2000 I picked up a copy of the Fairbanks Daily News Miner, which is the newspaper up there, and saw this ad for a guide for a log raft. And I was like, oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. Call the guy up. We had a very informal interview. And the next thing I know, I'm flying into the village of Rampart, flying over this giant log raft. It was beautiful. It was 70 feet by 30 feet, outfitted with beautiful um, canvas wall tents, a cook tent, fully stocked. Uh, we had a propane fridge and oven, and I mean, it was dope. <laughs> I mean, this thing, I was pinching myself thinking, I get to work on that log raft, so we're like flying in over it. I was just stoked. 
well, it ended up being the best summer of my life. I ended up um, guiding some pike fishing for him. So we had two skiffs and he would take a skiff and I would take a skiff. We'd fish the tributaries of the Yukon River. So people would come in like six guests at a time, stay with us for like a week while we floated down the Yukon River, maybe 60, 70 miles. And then they would leave, more people would come in, we'd take them fishing. I cooked on the raft. Oh, I mean, we just caught some massive pike and it was just, it's just wilderness. It was amazing. This was just the start of a really great friendship between Neil and the rest of my family. And uh, we've been friends ever since. And that, of course, led to the show Yukon River Run on National Geographic Channel. Um, it's basically showcasing all, all of Neil's skills as a riverman. You know, he's the only guy in the world who has put together a raft like this and taken people down. I mean, he's done it on his own for years and years and years, and he's also taking, you know, a commercial operation down the river. And I was just so happy to be part of that that year. And uh, what a what a cool thing. In fact, him and his son are still doing that, and I'll put that link below too to their website. Um, his son is now of age and, and is a musher and wants to run the Iditarod. Just great, real people, real Alaskans. You're not gonna find any more authentic stories and people than that, and that's definitely who I gravitate to. So when Neil gave me this pack, it's, it's a very special pack, I'll never get rid of this pack, and he gave it to me on the show, Yukon River Run. I think we were just kind of using it for decoration, to be honest, and uh, he said, Brooke, take that pack, because he, he knew I kind of liked it. So thanks, Neil, I really appreciate it. Um, I remember he left me alone on the raft for about a week. He had to fly back to Fairbanks, and uh, I had to take care of the raft all myself. We were tied up to shore, of course. Um, but the river is constantly fluctuating. You have, to, you have to always be booming it out and make sure it's not gonna get high-sided on, on the shore. So you gotta pay attention. The river water's moving constantly. So that was important to leave somebody there. Plus we've got all this gear, we've got all this food. He had some business to take care of in Fairbanks, and he says, you got this. I'm like, you know it, Captain. So there I was, in the middle of nowhere on this giant raft for uh, a week while he took care of business in town. I was, I was pretty freaked out about being there alone at night, you know. I'm like, man, what if, what if some bear comes up and decides to, to jump on the raft, you know, like in the night? So I rigged up like this whole alert system. I stacked all these cans and empty soda cans and cans of food so that because we had a gangplank that went from the raft to the shore and I thought I'm gonna I'm gonna wake up if something tries to get on this raft and uh, one morning I hear this I hear claws across the deck of the raft and the only way I can see what's going on is to lift up the bottom of my tent because we had I had the windows zipped I mean there was no way to see what else is out there I grabbed a shotgun and I kind of like did this army belly crawl to the front of my tent and I lifted it up and I was eye to eye with a porcupine. <laughs> I've never been so relieved in my life. So yeah, I survived a week alone on the raft, no bears, in paradise. It was wonderful. So guys, I want to hear about your favorite pack. Tell me all about it. Tell me if you've got one of these Trapper Nelson packs. And uh, if you don't have a favorite pack, tell me your other favorite piece of gear and why. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate your views. Thanks for your comments. Please leave me your thoughts below. And uh, if you like this video, thumb it up, please. If you're new to this channel and you'd like to subscribe, hit that button. Hit it, hit it, hit it. Hit it. All right, guys. Good to see you again. Until next time. And hey, guys, don't forget to go get happy in the woods.